Hi, hello my friends. It's so very good to see you. I hope you are ready for some crafty fun this morning. It is Christmas in July in the craft world and today I have a fun and um, elegant project for you all in the same and the same um, wrapped up into one. So I hope you're really going to enjoy today's project. Um, I've been inspired by those Christmas picks. You know those Christmas picks that you can find at your local craft store? They range from over the top elegant to super tacky and gaudy and today I just wanted to uh, replicate that look for you so that it's something you can use on your card. You'll be able to make a bunch of these with the easy stem wire and pop them into your tree branches as Christmas decorations if you so choose to you're going to love today's project. So I'm curious to know where you're from. If you're new here, my name is Tracy Fair. I'm based out of Manitoba, Canada. I'm one of the uh, Heartfelt Creations online education team, and I am so excited to be crafting with you today. Again, if you're new here, we would love to welcome you and um, hear how you heard about us. If this is your first time joining in on the live, be sure to say hello so we can welcome you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the comments and myself or one of the moderating team will get back to you as well. So come on in, let's pop on over to the work surface and take a peek at what we're going to be looking at today, working on today. Hello, Linda from Texas. It's good to see you, my friend. Patricia, good to see you here. Another fellow Canadian from BC. Natalie from the Netherlands. Hello, Susan from Tennessee. Angelique from the Netherlands. It's so good to see you guys. I'm so glad you've been able to join us today. So as I mentioned, Christmas in July in the craft world, and I didn't want to let a live go by without showing you how to create these beautiful, beautiful Christmas arrangements on your cards using the new Easy Stem Wire. If you have not seen those, uh, to, you're going to be able to get a good um, handle on how to use those today. So again, mixing and matching. I don't know if that's something we have covered on a live yet to this point, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to mix and match your florals on this uh, easy stem wire. So today we're going to be using the beautiful Sweet Magnolia along with the Festive Poinsettia, of course. You're going to see these are two flowers that are uh, very traditionally used in the florist um, field the flower shops when they are designing their Christmas bouquets. So again, something that we're going to mimic that is going to look realistic to that as being delivered in a floral bouquet. So let's take a look at this Sweet Magnolia first. This is what we're going to be using today. We're going to be using the Sweet Magnolia Blooms. Of course we have the um, stamps that are going to coordinate with these dies that make for easy cutting. And of course we have the coordinating shaping mold which we're going to be able to pop in our petal pieces and make a lot of these at one time. Which is fantastic when we're doing Christmas stuff because we have a tendency to love to create Christmas cards and we love to create a lot of them. So again, we're going to go ahead and start with this flower. I've used our deluxe flower shaping paper to go ahead and stamp these on here. Now I know this is going to be really hard to see. I've gone ahead and I have stamped the Sweet Magnolia Blossoms in Memento New Sprout. Now you'll find this on the website at www.heartfeltcreations.us. There will be a link popping up for you as well for easy shopping. New Sprout is one of my favorite colors to use when I want to go with a white floral. So again, this is one of my favorites because you're going to see how very uh, delicate that color remains. You're still going to have that veining and that um, elegance in the stamp, but it's not going to pop at you the same way as it will when you'll see the red point set up. So I've gone ahead and stamped those. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Ranger Archival Ink Goldenrod. You're going to see that's a very dull yellow and I want it to kind of keep these florals a little bit subdued white with just that little pop of color in the center. So you can see how I'm just using my stack and store dauber 
to go and create that yellow center. And I'm going around and I'm hitting portions of the um, petals. I'm not sticking to just the center because when we're going to insert that stamen, I want some of this yellow color to be filled in around it as well. So then we have our leaves for our sweet magnolia. This I have gone ahead and stamped in English Ivy. It's a very nice dark green. Now when I'm doing bouquets like this, I really like to use very different colors of greens. So in this one, we're going to keep it to the same tone here, but you're going to see how in the next bunch of flowers, we're going to go ahead and stamp in different color greens. Because just like in nature or in a florist bouquet, they aren't all the same. And that's what's going to give you some interest in your bouquets as well. So there you can see again, super easy coloring technique. I've gone ahead and stamped in the same color. That English Ivy, I've colored it in with the same color. Stack and store daubers are super quick and easy to use in that circular motion to get that coloring job done. Of course, next thing we would be doing is we would be going ahead and taking our um, coordinating dies and we would just be lining them up. You can see how that's going to fit that stamped image perfectly. And we would uh, now adhere this to the paper with a little bit of low tack tape and run this through our die cutting machine. And then we are left with these beautiful, beautiful die cuts that are so quick and easy to use. Now we used to have to hand shape these by hand and we are so thankful that this invention was created. This is the Sweet Magnolia 3D shaping mold. As you can see, I have some in here already that we're going to pop out in just a second. I'm going to pop those over to the side and I'm just going to show you for the Sweet Magnolia, I like to have my stamp side up. I really like the way they shape this way because when I go ahead and cup them, they have this beautiful um, rounded shape that they uh, fill out too beautifully. The leaves I always do stamp side down. Again, you can flip these around and you are going to get a different petal shape which is going to give you a different look on the magnolia. So again, don't be afraid to mix and match your flowers with how you've put them into your shaping mold. I'm going to show you later uh, how we do the poinsettia. I'm going to do the large one shaped one way and the smaller one shaped another. Just so you can see, no flower in a bouquet is ever perfectly the same. They have they're curled differently. They have petals that stick out in crazy directions sometimes. So again, we're trying to mimic that in our art. It's okay if our flowers aren't looking 100% perfect and they're taking on some character of their own. So again, I've gone ahead and I've popped these into the coordinating cavities. I'm just going to give these a spritz of water because remember I've gone ahead and I've used that deluxe flower shaping paper which has been engineered specifically for the flower shaping process. It's going to keep those colors beautiful and pure. They're not going to run. They're going to remain the color, the vibrancy that they are. And it's also engineered to take on that amount of moisture that you need for the flower shaping process. So again, we don't need to oversaturate them, just a quick little spritz is all we need. I can layer these up to three petals on each other. So again, I would go ahead and spritz in between all of them. For today's demonstration, you'll see how it's just done singly. But again, I could put another one on top of here, do another spritz, and then another layer on top of that yet, and we would still have phenomenal results. So again, we're just going to go ahead and pop this into place. Now I use my Big Shot to do my flower shaping, so I would use my clear plate on top and on bottom, run that through my Big Shot, and I would then be popping these out here. Now normally these would be a little bit damp when we would be taking them out of the shaping mold, and that's okay. This is still going to work for us here today. Um, but when they're a little bit damp, you can just go ahead and push that into the center and you can see how those petal pieces start to pop up. So we're just going to go ahead here. We're going to grab two large Sweet Magnolia pieces and we are going to grab the next size down. 
And those are the three that we are going to use for our, our um, flower that we're going to make here in just a second. You can see here the leaves have also got that beautiful texture. They are ready to be used as well. So again, we're going to pop those off to the side and we're going to start building our sweet magnolia. Before we do that, we're going to take a quick look at the easy stem floral wires. You're going to see that they come in a pack of 12. We have three different color combinations. Today we're going to be using the um, darkest one. To me, Christmas just seems like dark green fit the bill. But again, you're not going to go wrong with any of them. And they each have seven prongs on them. And I'm going to show you, I've started one here already. Just for time's sake, we don't have time to build the entire one together. But you can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five already created here. And here we're going to put on our last uh, sweet magnolia. And here we are going to add that last large point setup. So again, if you don't want to use all seven of the prongs on here, you can most definitely use a wire cutter to cut off portions that you're not wanting to use if you're not wanting to do such a full bouquet. They work beautifully for a sparse um, arrangement as well. Let's say a cluster of three is absolutely phenomenal as well. But for today, it's Christmas. I wanted to give you guys the full effect. So what we're going to do here first is we are going to go ahead and add some leaves onto uh, the stem here. Now, I used to work in a florist shop, so I was always taught you have to hide your mechanics. And that's something that I have really tried to bring into my crafting as well. So I like to actually slide these onto the stem so it looks like they're growing off of them. Now you'll see that I went in from the front and I went in again how to uh, from the back. That's going to give me a really nice round hole with not all those jagged edges trying to interfere with my um, pushing it onto the stem. We're going to do the same thing with this one. And I'm going to make this hole quite large so that we don't have to fuss around with the stem hopefully. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pop this on here and kind of see how I would like to have this arranged. And I hope I'm going to be able to show this to you okay that my fingers aren't all in the way. I'm going to try and do this step by step so you can kind of see this. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop this one over top. It's a smaller leaf so that it looks like they're going to be a double leaf there. I'm just going to hold that from the back. I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue gun and try not to burn myself. But I want to marry those two together in the shape that I want them. So I'm just going to hold them there for a second. And while that's setting up, we're going to start with our first um, magnolia here. I'm going to work from the center. No, actually, we're going to start with this one first. I'm going to take the largest petal and we're going to go in and we're just going to pop that center in like that. And I'm going to try and do the same thing from the back here. And this is the one that I'm going to pop onto the leaves here that we've just been working with. I hope you guys can see this okay. I know it's kind of an awkward... I'm just going to go ahead and pop that onto there. And again, I'm going to grab my glue gun. And I'm just going to marry that petal to that leaf back there. I'm going to turn it kind of how I want it to be. That's kind of how I want that to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go ahead, press that down there a little bit and just pop some glue onto here so that that stem is going to firm up and be sealed with that glue there. You can see that, how that glue is just going to go ahead and seal that right there. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to grab another big petal because I want two petals and then I want to do a size down to create the flower 
that we're working with today for the magnolia. Again, if you wanted to create the flower and just um, stick it onto the floral wire, that works as well. I just really like how this uh, keeps everything together. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the next petal size down, just like that. And now here's where we're going to start adding some stamens. So for the Sweet Magnolia, I've gone ahead and used the Bright Bead Stamens in the yellow. So that's what we're going to use for the center. Now these are wired, so that's going to make this job super, super easy. In the poinsettia, I will show you how to use these uh, string stamens. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop a tiny bit of glue in here before I pull my stamen through. I like to just set it that way a little bit. And the one thing I really like to do with the magnolia is as that glue is setting there, I really like to push up on that stamen. And you can see how that flower really cups up so very nicely. Okay, next we're going to grab our large petal. I'm going to go ahead and grab my hot glue and just add a little bit of glue around the center there and pull that up with opposing petals. And you can see how I can just really push that up and kind of shape that flower to be a really pretty cupped flower. I'm going to go ahead and just seal this off here just by going around the stamen. I'm going to set that to the side for just a second and we're going to let that dry. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually I don't like this portion here that's sticking off. You can see, I'm hoping you can see there's just that little uh, stem piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off just so that is a regular leaf there at the back. I like to go back and seal all of the backs here with just a really nice rounded mound of glue. That's just giving that flower a little bit of extra stability. You can see there how I've done all of them. It's not too unsightly, um, but it just gives a nice seal on the back there as well. So we're just going to let that set there for just a second. And then we're going to, uh, before we assemble that flower, we're going to let this pick just sit and dry a little bit. And we're going to move on to the point setup. Festive poinsettia. Beautiful. We have the small festive poinsettia, which I've gone ahead and used today. That's the size that we're using um, for the largest petal today. You can see that there is definitely a larger size in there as well, but this is the small. We have the large festive poinsettia, which here you can see I've gone ahead and used the smallest. Now this guy is really, really large. It's a beautiful size. Uh, we'll be using this in an upcoming live uh, throughout July yet as well. But here we're going to use the leaf as well, the holly berry leaf. That's something that we want to incorporate as well. Again, coordinating dies for all of these. We have the holly berry spray. We have some of these beautiful, beautiful sprays, but today for the bouquet, I just wanted this to be airy. So this is the one we're going to be using today. And we're going to um, utilize that one in a bit of a different hue than what we might normally pick for a Christmas creation. But again, the coordinating dies. Of course, we have the two shaping molds for the poinsettia, the large and the small. That's going to make life so much easier for us, especially when we're doing our Christmas creations. So again, I've gone ahead and I've stamped these in red geranium. I really like the red geranium color. It's a nice red, but it isn't, you know how sometimes we're used to that really bright 50s, 60s lipstick red? This is a little bit more subtle than that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use some buttercup in the center. I wanted to give this a little bit more of an orangey yellow a little bit brighter than what we had done for the um, Sweet Magnolia. So again, I'm going to go 
out into the petals ever so slightly and just give that some good color. Tell me, have you guys started on your Christmas cards already? I hope this is going to inspire that you that you are going to get a head start on it. It really does make a difference um, not to have to panic come November and December. Next, we're going to use that red geranium, that same color that we've gone ahead and stamped this in. And I'm just going to give this a very light coloring today. Again, you are always the artist. If you would want to go darker and change up the look of your flower, that is totally an option as well. There you can see I've got that all colored in nicely. That's going to be ready to be die cut. We have our holly berry leaf. Now this guy has been stamped in olive. Remember I said we wanted to go ahead and change up the colors that we were utilizing? That's what's going to give our bouquet a little bit of extra interest. So again, we're going to go back, we're going to stamp this in the olive, and we're going to color it in with some leaf green, just to give us a little bit of interest to this guy as well, that he's kind of like a two-tone uh, leaf. I'm not worried about hitting all of it with green. It looks quite nice. If you're going to look at these um, these Christmas picks in in the Christmas section when they're going to be coming out soon, you're going to see that not everything is fully colored all the way through either. Um, when you're going to look at professional, like let's say Hallmark, Hallmark cards or whatever, they aren't necessarily colored straight through all the way either. So this is a great way to give it some interest is to leave a little bit of white around as well. Here you see this little bit that we uh, are going to use as an accent. I've gone ahead and stamped him straight in Vivid Chartreuse. Again, it's a little bit of a brighter green, but when you're finished, you're going to see how that is going to make our centerpiece on our card pop. So again, we would use our coordinating dies, run this through our die cutting machine, and we're going to have some beautiful die cuts as well. So here, we're going to go back to the Sweet Magnolia quickly because I wanted to have time to set up while we're working on our point setup. So here you'll see I've just gone ahead and snipped off the back of the wire. I've sealed it in the back. I've done that little bit of sealing in here. So this little piece is going to stay in place. You want to keep these. Um, you can use these to wrap your um, thread stamens as well as the floral wire. I have some ready today with floral wire, but I always keep these to wrap as well. So this guy has now set up and what we're going to do is we're going to put another blob of glue here where we want our sweet magnolia to sit and I'm just going to go ahead and pop that into place and you can see how beautifully he's just going to sit there just really pretty we're going to hold him in place just a little bit so that the glue has some time to set up And we'll just pop it off to the side and we will let that finish setting there. And we will go ahead and work on our poinsettias. So here you can see we have all of our different pieces that we are going to be working with. The leaf is done the way it is. These guys we will do a little bit of hand shaping when we decide to add them into our bouquet. But for the poinsettia, because I left it a little bit light, I'm thinking they look a little bit dull for a Christmas arrangement. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to go ahead and add some of the same color we've been working with, the red geranium, and just hit some of the edging. And that's going to give this flower some more definition. So again, a super quick and easy coloring technique. I'll show you at the end here the difference between the two. And while it might seem like you're not doing much, the difference is quite amazing actually. 
example there, if I put these guys down together, you can see how one has more definition and one is still a little bit lighter. So I would do the same thing to this piece as well. We would go ahead and pop these into the coordinating shaping molds. So again, we've got the little one here ready. We've got the leaf already. We would just go ahead. These guys I have popped up. And here for the leaf, I would be pushing this guy down. Spritz of water. Clamp this together. And you would run this through your die cutting machine and come up with these beautifully shaped florals. And of course, our second mold here is going to hold our larger ones. Here you're going to see I put these guys stamped down. So these guys are going to curl ever so slightly differently. You'll, you can see how this guy has a more ragged look. He is kind of popping his leaves in a more jagged way and these guys have a more subtle look and once we round them out in the center they'll be finished so again these guys i put face down spritz of water run this through your die cutting machine and you're ready to start um, creating the rest of your bouquet so all i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and round out the center on these two mid sides. These are the two we're going to put together to give us the larger version of our poinsettia. But you can see here how this is a different looking flower simply in the way that I put it into the shaping mold. So again, I've gone ahead and used this style already on our pick. There you can see they are. And now we're going to go ahead and use this style because they don't all need to be the same. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I think we're going to start with some leaves here. We're going to go ahead and grab some poly leaves and we're going to poke a few holes through. front and the back just so I don't have all that loose paper there at the end. We're going to go ahead and slide that onto there. I think I want one to go off to the side and one to be a little bit more straight up. And I think that's going to look okay. So again, I'm going to grab my glue gun. We're going to just Marry those two leaves together. Hold that there for just a second. I'm going to go ahead and let that set for just a minute. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to do some hand shaping on our accent piece here. Just a little bit of um, hand shaping, some circular motions. Again, I'm going to go back in here just to make my glue point so I can apply that to my leaves. This one, I think I'm just going to go ahead and glue straight onto the top there because my flower is going to go ahead and it's going to um, cover the mechanics of that one anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this one kind of off to the side there like that. I'm curious, have you guys been using the Easy Stem wires? Are you enjoying them? What are your some of your favorite flowers that you've put onto your Easy Stem wires? Here I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a large hole. Here we're going to go ahead and use our pastel stamens, the medium stamens. Now these are the string stamens. This has a beautiful yellow in here that is gorgeous for your Christmas poinsettias. Now here I've gone ahead and I've used my florist's wire that you can get even at the dollar store. Dollar store usually sells this. Um, the uh, Michaels, Joann's, that sort of place usually sells this. But again, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you are keeping these 
these are the ones that I've cut off of that um, yellow one that we used on the magnolia because this is a coated wire and that's going to work for you the same application as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and just pull this through. I'm going to pull them down quite far but still have them sticking up a little bit. I think just like that. I like to go into my center of my stamens and add just a little bit of glue in there so that they do uh, seal up there as well. And again, we're going to seal the back of that as well so that when I cut that off later, I don't have to worry that those uh, stamens are going to fall out of their placement. So we're going to grab this second Festive poinsettia and we're going to go ahead and now add that onto our stem here. I'm just going to push that into place like that. I'm going to grab my glue and again get those pieces all to stick together. Just like that. I'm going to once again seal up that portion of the stem and I'm going to once again seal up the back here. And I'm just going to go ahead and rest that to the side here so that that now has some time to set. So while that's all setting and I'm waiting for that flower to set up a little bit, I want to talk to you about your card base. Card base. What kind of card base can you create with um, this bouquet that's going to take center stage? Now I have to say I keep my card bases quite simple because I really, really, really want that bouquet to take center stage. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've gone ahead and actually die cut into my card base. I have used the classic butterfly companion die. That's what it looks like. I'm going to show you here. I think I have mine handy. Yes, I do. I'm going to show you this die comes actually in three different pieces. Um, so you've got these two sides and that's what I've used to do the die cutting in my card today. And then you have this piece here that has the butterfly cut out. So I've chosen not to use this one here today. And what I've gone ahead and done is I'm going to give you a little tip here. I've gone ahead and cut my five by seven card base. And when you're going to cut it, it's flat like this, right? So I've gone ahead then and scored where my uh, center is. Before I do anything else, I actually went ahead and die cut this piece while it was flat and before I'd actually folded it so that it's going through your um, machine once or twice. If it's a really intricate die, this one I find sometimes you have to run through twice. Now this is going to work if you have a larger platform. This is probably not going to be ideal for you if you're using just the regular size big shot. So I apologize for that. But again, all I've done here is I've gone ahead and I have put these into place, taped them into place, run this through my die cutting machine, and I have this very pretty um, die cut background that's going to hold my bouquet. I wanted to go ahead and add something interesting in the center because here at the bottom, it was just a solid white piece, right? You had like this white piece showing through. So I thought this would be really pretty just to accent coming down the center. If you actually wanted this to look like a gift with a flower cluster on top, you could actually do across the center as well. And that would be very beautiful too. Because this is a die cut front, I wanted to be able to see something pretty accenting in the back as well. So you're going to see, I've used paper from the Festive Poinsettia collection. I've gone ahead and used a pretty white gold and green piece that's going to coordinate with the flower um, bouquet that we're creating now. I've also gone and matted a little bit of white along with one of the um, 
card panels that you can use with the sentiments that come in all of our Christmas uh, collections. So again, before we move on to the next step with that, we're going to just jump back here because this is going to be ready. And we're going to give this a little bit of extra time to dry it too while we finish off the front of our card front. So again, I'm just going to snip that off. I'm going to go ahead and puddle my glue on here. I'm super generous with my hot glue because I want this all to stay together. We're going to offset our petals and I'm just going to nestle that right in there. And we're going to hold that a little bit while that glue has time to set. And then we'll put it off to the side and let it finish setting while we finish our card front. I'm sorry, you guys, I've done a lot of jumping around today, but I wanted you guys to um, get uh, a feel for how to assemble these flowers and give them the proper time to dry before we moved on. Because at home, you would have more time, I know, to let this all set and dry. So we're just going to pop that off to the side. Next thing we're going to do is I wanted to tie in some of the gold because we're going to be using gold glitter on our um, flowers today. So I wanted to tie that into the background here and have something kind of just ground that bouquet. You're going to see it kind of looks like it's floating here when we're looking at it like this. But if we're going to go ahead and ground it, it's going to have... Um, a little bit of this that's going to show around the edges of it and it's going to tie that uh, gold color in that we're going to be using as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my dries clear adhesive. I'm actually going to just go ahead and pop some on here where we know this die cut is going to land. And this is the Ornate Ovals. It is actually from the Snowy Pine collection. Um, so again, beautiful, beautiful ornate ovals. I pull this one out a lot with my Christmas cards. Just gorgeous. So again, this is something, if you don't have this in your stash, uh, this is something that you probably want to add uh, for your Christmas cards this year. So again, remember, if you're an Insider member, you get to place um, as many orders as you like for free shipping if you're in the U.S. There's no minimum order to take advantage of that. And for our international friends, we offer a 20% discount. Now remember, when you have a die cut base, card base front, you don't want to add glue onto your die cut that you're adding onto there, simply onto the solid part. That's why I went ahead and did just that centered piece. So that brings us to our floral cluster. I think that we are good and dry. You can go ahead and bend these so that they come forward, come back. Again, that's turned out to be a really, really nice Christmas cluster. What I would do is I would go ahead and add hot glue to the back of my stem here. And I would go ahead and glue that into place. You kind of can bend so that it's going to lay flat. The other thing I do is I like to twist some of these wires around each other. If your flower lands up not being in the particular place where you want it, or let's say I added a large one here and I really wish I would have added a, something smaller and the point set would have fit that criteria, I just twist them around each other to get the flower where you want it to be. So that's another great tip that you can see here. This guy, I've gone ahead and twisted around each other. Flowers grow around each other, don't they? So why wouldn't they in our little clusters here as well? So you can kind of get them arranged as you want. In this finished one, I've gone ahead and added a beautiful uh, goldish yellowish bow. You can finish off the bottom like that as well. And of course, we're never finished until we've gone ahead and added our glitter. So today I opted to use Lion's Mane. It's a beautiful gold glitter uh, with some different pinks and different stuff like that in there. We're just going to go ahead and grab this here. Now remember when I talked about some of the Christmas picks that you find in the store are a little bit gaudy? That's what we're going to do now. Okay, you guys? You know how, let's say, okay, here in Canada we've got like Canadian Tire. 
they're all thrown into a bin and you kind of like rummage through them and some of the glitter has fallen off and some of them aren't so perfect anymore. That's actually the look we're going to go for here today, if you can believe it or not. I don't want everything color covered in gold glitter because the gold is going to overpower everything quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just grab some dries clear. I'm actually going to take my tip off so that it flows a little faster here for time. I'm going to go ahead and just add that on here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit parts of my poinsettia, parts of my leaves. And then I'm going to go ahead and just where I've hit those portions, that glitter is going to stick. So there you can see we have just a little bit of glitter stuck on that poinsettia. You can always add more till the balance looks about right to you. We're going to go here. I'm going to add a little bit behind on this magnolia petal because sometimes those inexpensive picks they have more on the front they have more on the back than they do on the front but you can see isn't that pretty how just that hint of gold on that sweet magnolia that's really all you're needing so again you're going to see how this came together with the beautiful golds that we're adding we've got the different hues of greens in all of our different leaves and it's looking just like a very super interesting pick. Again, this would be fantastic on a gift. You could decorate a gift this way. You could absolutely make a bunch of these and pop these into your trees. I have some of those really elegant picks from Michaels that I just stick into the branches of my trees. Again, super quick and easy. Just pop it on the card and you have a one-of-a-kind card that your family and friends are going to absolutely love. I'll give you one last look at the finished card here just so you can see how I haven't hit that gold glitter everywhere. It's just in random places. The other thing I really love, if you have some unsightly um, glue, you know, from, from the backs here where you've added the glitter that hot glue kind of dries rubbery all of that is covered when you go ahead and start glittering it seems to just stick onto it and be attracted to that as well so again i hope you have had fun and enjoyed what i've had to share with you today i've been super super excited about these easy stems i think for christmas creating they are going to be phenomenal remember you can mix and match your flowers as well i had originally wanted to do the aster uh, because in the florist shop we used to do a lot of mum settas uh, with the poinsettia with the mums and to create the aster looking like a mum would be phenomenal as well but the sweet magnolia has just really won my heart over for these uh, Christmas combination florals so again if you are not an insider member and taking advantage of those perks we will pop down uh, the information for you below for a link to follow so many great perks 20% uh, off your purchases again access to all of our online classes we have so so, so many of them there's a new Christmas one launching with the new holiday star collection that's coming out next week I can't wait to showcase that one with you as well so again take care my friend I know we've gone a lot gone over a little bit of time here uh, thanks for sticking with me I can't wait to craft with you again soon take care bye bye